we have attached in board docs uh, what the uh, meeting request dates are that we had already approved earlier, probably in the last few months. March. March. Oh, here we go. Of uh, the meeting dates for 2015 14. We also have attached our policy in terms of what it says on the um, board meeting dates. Its policy. Yes, it is. We just started. So we have both our dates that were approved by us back in March for this coming academic year. We also have our policy, which states that the first and third Tuesdays of each calendar month are designated as the regular board meeting dates. So I know we all oftentimes have conflicts. Sometimes they are specific dates, and so we move instead of a first and a third, for example, in an election year, I requested that we not meet on the first Tuesday in November when there's, a, say, a major presidential election going on. Some of us might have other things that we're doing. Um, I know we've we've changed that for um, holidays, um, religious holidays. Um, so we have that, that flexibility, but I, perhaps, I don't know if our administration wants to talk about what goes into the meeting prep so that we have an idea? Um, I've had the opportunity to talk to all board okay. members regarding that. So if there's questions, I'd be happy to answer. So does anyone want to, I, I know that there was a possibility of some scheduling conflicts, and I just want to see what. Well, um, I know, so that's our, our, our own board policy, our state school board policy, that it's the first and third. Um, so at some point, if we wanted to, we can change it. Um, it's um, the first uh, Tuesday of the month complex. Um, seriously, we can live on me um, every first Tuesday of the month except during the summer. So um, so I didn't realize. Um, I guess I should have been a little bit more aware back in March. Um, when we approve the meeting dates for the future year. Um, so I guess it, it was me that's conflicted. So there might be some first Tuesday of the month that I'll be doing something else, or perhaps um, or a debate or something. Uh, would it be, you know, if it's something that's arriving late? Um, it depends how late, but we often do. I used to be the admittedly the latecomer, and they used to start without me. Um, but you know, we, we do start with pledge and um, yeah. approval of the agenda and consent agenda items. But it's it, another meeting, so it just depends on how late that It starts at six, so, <laughs> so I have a little bit of delay. So. so I guess the question would be if we wanted to do a change, and it is, my understanding is it is a, probably a meeting that other members of our community might also be involved in. I, I might have a misunderstanding, but just that there's... It's at the Loma Linda. Okay. Loma Linda, so, yeah. so, it's a neighborhood that's been very supportive of our school, um, and that's very active and involved, especially with our district. So, uh, they, it's up to the governing board what we want to do. I, I think in lieu of the fact um, Dr. Um, Boyle was explaining to me that all the schools have created everything around that um, that calendar and all the county that is set for the whole future school year. So um, I don't know. I, I'd be willing to wait till next February to bring it up again for the future year. I appreciate your uh, bringing this up with us. Um, and we've all learned a little bit more about what goes in on the staff end and uh, in terms of the, the calendaring, too. So if we are not going to uh, do any, uh, take any action on that or have further discussion, then. Until February. 
okay. till agenda. at this point. So we'll put it on a future agenda item, perhaps. So you can bring it back in January, so we can do the policy change because it'll involve a policy. Yeah, it'll probably involve a process that takes a couple yeah. months, so we we'll probably want to do it because it'll take a first reading, a second reading, and then so maybe even December. I think in January we probably okay. We do that at back to back meetings, and if we know what we're doing, it will only take two meetings. Okay, so let's move on to the approval of the Valley Interfaith Project or VIP resolution. Um, there was a board member request on this as well. <coughs> Does someone want to introduce or talk about the? Um, I, I requested this item. Uh, there was an article that came out in the Republic about um, Valley Interfaith Project working with the Scottsdale Unified School District. And with all the cuts that have been coming down in that district as well as all districts across the state, parents were really upset about the cuts that were being made, about art teachers going away um, and programs being cut, after school programs being cut and those sorts of things, and they didn't really understand why. And a lot of their anger was being directed toward the school um, district. So Valley Interfaith came in and they were working with parent groups and helping them understand that the school district is one player in the big picture and help them understand the role of the state legislature and state funding and, and how it really ties the hands of the district in a lot of ways. So what came out of that, the governing board decided that they were going to do a resolution supporting, um, just reminding the state legislature of their constitutional duty and trying to encourage them to restore funding cuts that they've made to education. So that just occurred, um, I think it was last week. And then they're going to send a formal letter to the governor. So I thought um, Valley Interfaith hasn't been as active in our district as they were in the past. Um, and they haven't you know, been working with parents like they, they were in Scottsdale. So it would have been really cool if uh, parents could also have gotten that information from Valley Interfaith and really been able to understand the big picture maybe there's an opportunity for that moving forward but in the meantime I just thought it's something we should consider as a board just to continue to send that message to the state legislature about how important state funding is is this resolution um, the same or identical to uh, ones being passed by other districts I think Scottsdale is the only one that has passed that passed a resolution at least in partnership with VIP um, I guess I should have explained what that was, the Valley Interfaith Project. I think you mentioned. Okay. Does everyone know that? I know. Okay. Um, maybe, I know in the past we haven't we done a resolution about budget. I think we have been before in the past. But this is based off of the Scottsdale, um, what the Scottsdale Governing Board had passed, but it includes updated information on Creighton, Creighton specific information. I know it kind of falls kind of late in terms of the state legislature <laughs> deciding the budget and the governor and everything. Um, but I don't know, maybe it could be a starting point for us sending the message up as a board. I know individually some of us lobby the legislature for increased educational funding, but I don't know that we always send that message as a board. And that message, I know as a board, is somewhat, uh, is usually stronger. Go ahead. I, I was kind of having an opportunity. I think that um, I, I guess as I'm looking here, uh, because we have committed ourselves to like music arts, PE, and other programs, especially as it relates to uh, professional learning communities and stuff. If we were to do that, we might want to. Revise it, a it does refer to school districts throughout the state, so not this is okay. not, not just our district. that part, is, that not part is not. Although the the Creighton specific area was the um, was our okay. specific one point five million annual. Um, state budget to yeah. education to increase the base operating okay. budget of the Creighton. Is that really okay. seems like it's been much more than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, are we sure the decimal is not um, 1.5 million or 15 million since FY08? 
And I realize other factors go in, such as enrollment. I did that calculation, and if you recall, we lost a lot more funding uh, through enrollment loss mm -hmm. than we did from state cuts, and and I I could engineer that figure to come out to almost anything, but I thought it I thought it proper to remove from the equation the the loss of enrollment. That makes sense. <clears throat> Weren't the majority of the cuts was in capital? Yes. So that's the that's capital's stopped. included in, in that oh, okay. figure. <clears throat> so that doesn't exactly align with the districts throughout the state cutting non capital expenditures. I mean, obviously, there's a little bit of play in a budget between soft capital and capital and such, but those are m and reductions, and probably it's a result of school districts not able to pass their m and and capital overrides, um, which I think is one of the things that clearly, as you said, precipitated Scottsdale's um, parents to be involved. You know, I'm, I'm not opposed to passing resolutions that say, hey, fund us appropriately. Um, I think what I would really love to have had a conversation with the IP about and protect, like you said, that's maybe an option, um, is for them to coordinate parent engagement and involvement meetings similarly to the way that they communicated and coordinated um, and invested the time into Scottsdale, into our district. Um, because I think that's where the real value is. It's, it, for us to create a resolution and, and to send it off, I think if there's some power in that, but the real power is educating our, our community about what it means to cut uh, programs and, and such because of um, what the legislature does. So I would be eager to have conversations or have you know staff have conversations with VIP in terms of determining what's an appropriate process and, and when that would happen. Obviously now summertime is maybe not the best time uh, in terms of organizational um, capacity for the district or for them as an organization, uh, but certainly being able to engage our community in those discussions is important, and doing so without the district um, being mindful of the fact that we have some uh, an election that's coming uh, in the fall as well. We want to be sure that we're you know, above board in terms of that process and how that works as well. Well, I know, in, so in the past, just to give the new board members some history, for, it, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> um, the principal of Creighton Elementary, she a, was a former nun, and she was very involved with Valley Interfaith, and she was the one that was instrumental in getting uh, them involved in the school and, and really um, engaging the current population there. But that was with her, you know, with her gone, unfortunately, that hasn't continued. So um, it would be great to have more conversations with VIP. I don't know what, at what level that happens or how they typically get involved with parents. Um, I'd be interested in learning more about that. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I'm going to follow up with the organizer I've been talking to. Because I think it, yeah. the more we can empower our, our parents, the better. Is this a resolution to vote on now, or just? Yeah, we can. Okay. If someone wants to uh, make changes or make a motion, we can entertain that. I make a motion that we pass this resolution. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. Um, is there any final discussion on this? If not, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? No, it is, uh, sorry, no one is opposed. That wasn't me voting now. <laughs> so it is unanimously approved. We move on to the uh, ASBA policy advisories. And I suppose there is there any further presentation, Dr. Bogner? This is yes, what we had last um, week. On the, the on KHC distribution, posting, and promotion materials, there's no additional information on that one. On JLCCA acquired immune deficiency syndrome, no additional information on that one. That was just a wording change to align it, and some reference changes. Um, on the interscholastic sports one, however. Um, 
Ildi brought up the issue of do we have, and so in your folders we have our um, heat index guidelines and procedures, and I think for the board's information, understanding that this interscholastic sports policy is really written for high schools, as we were looking at it, and it was Dr. Boyle, Bill and I, we were looking at it, uh, we thought there were some good pieces in there. And I think our original recommendation, and if you go to uh, the attachment, you see that um, Hilda has crossed out on page, um, I don't know what page it is, 35 of 42, heat acclimatization protocol, days one through five, because it was specific to the sport of football um, and having to do with the equipment. And of course, we don't have that. But I think as I look at our uh, heat index guidelines and procedures, uh, in the first paragraph, second sentence, Creighton provides various opportunities for outdoor physical activities before, during, and after school. These guidelines are meant to provide a decision-making structure to promote student and staff safety when local weather may be detrimental to their health. I do think that we have processes and procedures in place to deal with our after-school programs, and so the board could choose to uh, not adopt policy JJIV because we do have procedures in place, um, or the board we may think that certain parts of JJIV is, are important um, and applicable and could choose to adopt it uh, in part. Um, it's, it's, it's up to the board at that point. So I just wanted to let you know these are our guidelines, this is what we've been using, and um, thus far, We've, I'm almost hesitant to say this, but we've been successful in uh, making sure that our children are safe when it comes to heat related issues. Is, is there a recommendation from the administration on what to, what to do? I don't believe we need the policy. Okay. I think we have, have in place what we need. Then I would be personally, I would be fine with that. Uh, yeah, I'm not inclined to approve policies that we don't need right. to add to yeah, the policies. <laughs> um, but I, I do like, um, in terms of our guidelines and procedures, um, perhaps some of the definition language that's in this policy to help really clearly describe. Um, the, the definitions in terms of what the illnesses are those four items because I think that's important and valuable for um, obviously our school staff but I, I think as much as our guidelines and guidelines and procedures are for school staff I think there are also opportunities to help educate our families and so to be able to help let, raise the level of awareness when our children are at home with their families or you know playing in the backyard or going to the zoo or whatever the case might be um, that, you know, by adding those definitions, I think that there's some value, but I don't think we need the entire policy. Yeah, and that might, that might work somewhere before the last page, say, that says uh, all parents should, and then where we go into heat stress, really, is mm -hmm. there. Yeah, recognize these symptoms or such mm -hmm. without giving medical advice or presuming, <laughs> presuming that we're doing that. But, <laughs> So there's some kind of legal ease in there. With that, questions of the other two policies. So this requires a motion. It's an action item. So does someone want to move that? And how do we? If it's going to be not that policy, we can just say 466 and 467 okay. instead of the 465 through 467. And Dr. Boyle, you want to? I just have a question. Uh, so on this uh, interscholastic policy, if we were to uh, adopt some of the um, definitions, would that come back then as a? Uh, no, because I, my understanding, and please correct me, is that the idea would be put it into our procedures, yes. not our policy. Yeah, exactly. So go into our procedures. We would we can provide a copy to the board to the board bulletin, so okay. they can see everybody can see that we made those changes. Okay, thank you. 
In terms of 467, I mean, I don't, I'm not really leaning in either direction, but I don't see a huge value to the district to expand the amount of promotional material that we make available to families. I know that the examples that you used, Dr. Wagner, last time in terms of things that are beneficial to families um, that they can't currently get access to, but you know, I, I think that there's a lot of information that, we, that is available to families already, and I just wonder the, the, the if we sort of desensitize. Into, we have a process, but the challenge you run into is you can't discriminate on viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at activities for children, that's one thing, but I think, I, I don't, I can't give you any hard examples, but one of my cautions would be, you know, what kind of viewpoints would we be allowing for adult types of opportunities? I don't know. Well, I mean, well, the first thing that jumps to mind, honestly, is, you know, in our community, we have a lot of check cashing you know, businesses. I would hate for our school's offices to be, you know, promotional havens for things that really victimize families in our community. Um, and certainly they're not going to communicate it in that way, but sure. that, as we know from, I wouldn't say research in air quotes, but um, what we see in terms of the Attorney General and others trying to address and, and minimize those kinds of businesses. Um, I would hate for this policy to give businesses like that and others now a venue that they don't have currently. So, um, and that's the one, I mean, example that just popped into my head, even the last board meeting, and, and I don't know if that's, you know, limited to just that, but I'm sure that there's going to be other organizations or businesses like that, that we wouldn't have a we're opening up a Pandora's box that we don't currently know what's in it, and so it might be just better to keep it closed. So this policy, just to be clear, what we see with 467 or whatever it is mm -hmm. it's on the page 15 up here, um, what our current policy is is that is all of this, including the part that's crossed out, correct? Mm -hmm. And so this change would cross out that specific statement. Of that paragraph would be eliminated. Just that. That's opening it up yeah. to broader form. I don't see an issue with our current policy. And if I'm not hearing an issue of any added. feedback on the issues with our current policy, and I think I remember when this policy was adopted to begin with, um, then I would be inclined to not change this policy. So in which case, if that were the case, we would just approve 466 unless one has strong opinions on distributing and posting materials in our schools. Okay. Does someone want to make a motion? It sounds like we might be okay with just adopting 466. I move the governing board um, adopt policy advisory number 466, JLCCA, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome and Human Immunity immunodeficiency virus infections in accordance with, in accordance with policy BGB. It's been moved is it's second. and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, it is passed. Legislative political report. The state has a budget. I don't know if anyone has anything they want to add. Um, we, for the first time in, it seems like umpteen years, three years, maybe we have an inflation factor adjustment, but there wasn't any money, I don't think, for any increase in capital. Um, there was a combination of coral and soft capital, I think, but it keeps the amount the same. And I don't know if it was part of the statute, I don't think it was, I think it was just a comment, but supposedly the inflation funding, the 1.8, was also our monies to fund uh, everything that goes along with Common Core. Yes. That was a comment, I think, by the president of the Senate when he introduced his version of the budget. Um, so, and and as I think we've already sort of established, um, our bonding capacity was increased, so. Anyone else have anything? If not, future agenda items, other than those that have been identified? I have one, just because it keeps coming up again and again. Um, we talked about it a little bit tonight by accident, and 
both parents and teachers have brought it up to me. So I just want to know, I'd like a, a like an informational presentation about a comparison, a comparison of retention of teachers by school site in Creighton School District, as well as what it's like in surrounding districts. Because I know in urban districts, um, you know, teacher retention, it's harder to keep teachers. And so I, would, I just want to know if this idea of teacher retention in Creighton District is really happening, or is it, you know, something that's happening all throughout schools in other urban districts? So if we can maybe get that at some point, it'd be really cool maybe if we could do it on August 3rd, but I don't know if there's time during that meeting. So that's it. It might not be, but um, we will add that to a future agenda mm -hmm. item. If that's it, I'd entertain a motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I had, to, I had asked about this one before, um, a future agenda item. I'd like to have discussion about after-school programs. I don't know if, is it on our August 3rd? Let's see, um, after-school. It's not August, August 3rd, but it is in our to be determined. Okay. It's still in our So what we can do is schedule that. Yes. <laughs> Maybe um, can we do? Um, we have nothing so far for the August. Actually, we have nothing showing on here for August sixth or twentieth. So, I'd if we could give staff an opportunity to come back and get settled, yeah. and have them participate in the conversation. I think it would be more fruitful to do so. And just for the record, we have had governing board meetings that have lasted under an hour, so it is okay. <laughs> I don't mean to make a commentary. That's just something I can. Just that some some of these things, as we go through the summer, we don't have staff. It may be harder, as Dr. Bogner said. So. Okay. So if we could put that in. Uh, what I'm this, saying is. They would be way more informative than I would. Exactly. <laughs> Do we want to put it in um, September? And then when is it that you would not be possibly here? Would be beginning in September, September 6th? I'd say maybe the second, maybe the second meeting in August. If we don't have. Which would be August twentieth. August August twentieth. I think that's what. Then we have nothing on. There's nothing on that agenda. Yeah. Does that give enough time? Yeah, I think it's Yeah. Let's do August twentieth. That way we can instead of having ones that have nothing and ones that are jam packed, we can spread it out. Okay. So any other agenda items? I move the governing board adjourn. I second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Before ten PM.